Now, your first alert forecast, certified most accurate. Tornado watch continues for this evening. We have our crews out. This picture here coming in from Chris Lee. He is out across southwestern Oklahoma. Rain is coming down. Severe thunderstorm warning right now, but the instability is still there and the amount of shear increasing in the atmosphere this evening and overnight. And the tornado threat will certainly continue for at least another five hours. Corey Inman, he is out across northwestern Oklahoma right now. We have a tornado warning in effect for Harper County. You have to look closely with each lightning strike for any type of lowering in the in the uh, clouds. It's certainly a, a challenging and difficult part of storm chasing this time of the year because the sun set so early, but there you go right there. Certainly not seeing much in the form of any type of uh, lowering there. However, the threat is very much going to be uh, sticking around across northwestern Oklahoma for the next few hours. I want to show you the latest right now with this tornado watch. Again, this watch in effect until 3 a.m. all of western Oklahoma. It does include Oklahoma City, Guthrie, up to Enid, down to Moore, Norman, Paul's Valley, Purcell, and as you make your way towards Chickasha and Anadarko. Here's the latest right now with first alert Doppler 3D. A little bit of light rain across the metro. Jonathan, let's first go into this tornado warning up in Harper County because this has been an area that has been quite favorable for tornadoes this evening. Uh, it certainly looks like a hail core is going to exist just uh, west of Buffalo, north of Roston. Looking at this red and this green couplet here, this looks like it's over some rural land. However, the uh, potential for a tornado is still very much there. Five miles northeast of Roston, moving up to the northeast. This will make its way into Kansas uh, within the next few minutes or so. Fortunately, it is going to stay mostly over some rural land, and it's going to hopefully stay at least uh, north of Buffalo, but this entire line will still impact Buffalo by 1031. And then Selman, Selman, and we had a tornado warning just minutes ago. Here's going to be another storm that we have to watch pretty closely. Moving to the east here, but for the most part, it looks like the hail core is going to stay north of uh, Route 64 here, right along Highway 183. And again, Buffalo, we're keeping a pretty close eye on this. Again, tornado warning. This is the only tornado warning in the main body of the state right now. We do have severe storms now marching in across western and southwestern Oklahoma. So we're going to uh, go down to that warning in effect until 1045. Jonathan, let's go down to the south here and show these uh, this line of storms that's now getting ready to make its way in across western Oklahoma. It's about 1018. I know a lot of us are usually going to bed now, but here's going to be another storm just near Cheyenne as you make your way down towards Sayer and Eric. And then here's going to be the severe thunderstorm part of it. This warning stretches out for a good part of the state here from Altus all the way up to Elk City. And we're going to be looking out for some pretty strong winds as that's certainly going to be a big time threat. Even if you don't have a tornado, the potential for winds up around 80 miles per hour will definitely be there. So putting an updated storm track here up to the northeast, we'll put it into Mangum at 1020, Lake Altus at 1035, Lone Wolf 1040, Burns Flat 1055, Cordell 1107, Mountain View 1116, Weatherford 1131. Again, we're going to keep our crews with this storm because more than likely this will impact Oklahoma City. So this storm system right here is still a ways away, but it will be moving up to the northeast and should make its way into the metro uh, within the next, uh, I'd say, at least a couple hours or so. Tornado risk is still there out across western Oklahoma. It comes down, however, across central Oklahoma. So again, on a scale of 1 to 10, we still have a high chance of a tornado. We've already had at least a few tornado reports up here, so this scale has indeed verified, but still the threat is going to be there from Clinton to Hobart. The threat comes down across Oklahoma City on a scale of 1 to 10. It is a 4, so it's a little bit lower, but it's still there. Got to watch out for the potential of some spin-up tornadoes as the squall line eventually makes its way through here. And the same thing can be said down towards Paul's Valley, Chickasha, up to Perry, Ponca City, and Medford. So what's the latest now with the model data coming in? 11 o'clock, line of storms from Woodward down to Clinton, Altus. All of this right here will have the potential to be severe. It continues to move to the east. Midnight makes its way through Weatherford, Hinton, making its way into western parts of Canadian County, Fairview, up towards Alva, down to Anadarko. Doesn't impact Oklahoma City until about 2 a.m. Remember, this tornado watch in effect until 3 a.m. So all of this right here will still have the potential for a tornado. We're going to keep our crews out tonight. You know we're going to be watching it closely as it makes its way east of I-35 by 3 a.m. And then it impacts those of us between, uh, say, Bethel Acres, Shawnee, and in towards Seminole. And it's east of Paul's Valley and Purcell by 4 a.m. Morning drive.
not looking all that bad. It will be sunny. So closer inspection into the metro 1 a.m. Looks like at least some very heavy rain between El Reno Union City. Storms begin to move in towards Oklahoma City. 2 a.m. It will be loud more down to Norman Bridge Creek and then making its way quickly in towards Pottawatomie County by 4 a.m. And again, the morning commute looking just fine. So your five plus five day forecast storms ending in the morning, sunny and windy by the afternoon, 65 degrees. Not a bad week here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we stay in the 60s, lows in the 40s. Saturday looks to be pretty cold. Strong cold front's going to come in here. Highs only in the mid 40s. Going into next week, however, temperatures begin to climb. We've reached 70 degrees by Tuesday. And then as we go in towards Wednesday, busy travel day as we go into Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving right now looks wet, cloudy, and highs only around 50 degrees. So Storms getting ready uh, to impact many of us. And again, we have all of our crews out and we'll keep an eye on it. Okay, right. Damon. Hey, we just got some video in mm -hmm. from Jeremy Carter. Right. Let's take a look at this. Again, it's just coming into our newsroom. Damon, this is from Goodnight, Texas, um, the panhandle out there. Yeah, certainly this is one of many tornadoes that our uh, fast units were able to capture this afternoon while it was still light outside. Challenging part of the uh, this time of the year, sunset about 530. So there are many tornado reports that they caught even in the dark. But again, you're looking for lightning flashes, and so uh, this this is what many of us are still going to be dealing with over the next few hours. Okay. Okay, it's going to be a long much. night ahead, Damon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Coming up next, uh, Russell Westbrook was at his best on.